Good afternoon. As you know, we're meeting again today to reassess our four cities lockdowns that we had last week. Um, the danger of the spread of the coronavirus still looms in our communities and across the state. The only way to defend against this is to stay away from it. The governor has assigned a series of executive orders to defend against the virus. As we stay home and introduce curfews, keeping our distance may not just be enough in our communities. We have found that we've taken a collective action to vigorously enforce the order. We now return to the conference to assess those efforts. We have agreed to have our municipal public safety leaders here to report on the enforcement of the governor's executive order. Again, the close proximity of our communities as it relates to the travel between our neighborhoods and the share ports and cultures through the commerce and industry between our cities, we have determined that we must assess and re refine our collective action against the coronavirus. So now I want to introduce uh, the mayor of the city of Orange Township, New Jersey, Dwayne Warren. Uh, good afternoon, mayors, how are you? Uh, the city of Orange is still trying to fight this battle on all fronts. It is uh, invigorating to have uh, four cities with us, making sure that we do this because of borders really um, is where a lot of the activity is happening. I'd like to take the opportunity to introduce our um, police director um, to give a report and an assessment on the items um, that we paid attention to during our last call. You remember we had four items. We had the lockdown, Operation Wipe Down, Operation Clean Business, and then the wellness checks. Um, I thought each one of us would go through one by one of how um, those items have been affected. I'd like to bring forward my police director, Todd Warren, to give a report and an assessment. Good afternoon, mayors, um, law enforcement executives. I wanna first begin by thanking Mayor Warren um, for his leadership in supporting the Orange Police Department and enforcing the uh, governor's directives. Um, in terms of Operation Lockdown, we are conducting nightly uh, roving border patrols. Um, the residents are complying with the governor's directives and the curfews. Um, the streets are pretty empty and quiet, so we're not really having any problems with folks. But if we do see someone, we engage um, in a manner where they will understand the importance or the severity of this situation. So we pretty much have it um, pretty locked down and, and, and stable in terms of enforcing the curfew. And then what, what are you saying in terms of the businesses? In terms of the businesses, they are in compliance. We have, <clears throat> excuse me, we have deployed our community service bureau along with our code enforcement to go to each business and ensure that they are complying with the, um, the governor's directives. They are doing so. That completes the report for the city of Orange Township. All right, thank you, uh, Mayor Warren. Now we'll go over to the city of East Orange and the mayor of the great city of East Orange, the Honorable Ted Green. Uh, thank you, Mayor. Uh, let me just say, uh, we are continue to um, do a full court press in terms of taking an aggressive uh, role in uh, making sure that um, the stores here in the city of East Orange continue to uh, stay in compliance. Um, our police department has been doing a outstanding job along with our health department. Um, also, um, they have been doing a daily four to five to six times a day uh, store checks, uh, our wellness check. Uh, I have with me today our director of public safety, uh, Dominic Sedita. Good afternoon, mayors. Dominic Saldita, City of East Orange. I will give you a report on what the PD and fire department have done in the last week. Uh, we initiated this on March uh, 27th. Uh, we took our initial uh, stands as social distancing, which was our number one priority through the governor's directive and also the mayor's uh, directive. Uh, following that, we started to enforce it by having a 6 p.m. to 8 p.m. Uh, task force. We divided our city in two different uh, zones, in zone A and zone B. During this time, we teamed up with um, the town of Orange and also the town of Newark, where we did borderline uh, patrolling and we did a lot of uh, uh, educational uh, awareness through the PA systems uh, on both sides of the line. 
which showed to start giving us a difference in the amount of folks that are on the street in the last four to five days. Uh, we still have a percentage that we're dealing with, like uh, Director Ambrose has said. Uh, I don't know if it's 15% on my end in the city of uh, East Orange, but we have a percentage that phone calls are still coming in to the mayor's office and to the PD where we're going out every night, maybe groups of five, 10, 15 people, dispersing them and sending them on their way with education. Uh, since being involved in the, the uh, lockdown task force with both agencies, uh, with Newark, uh, we did a partnership uh, on the line of South Orange Avenue where over 151 vehicles were advised verbally over the PA system uh, <coughs> that uh, it was after a curfew uh, time frame and uh, they were only supposed to be on the streets for initial uh, for essential purposes. Uh, we also went into two different uh, convenience stores. Uh, one on Tremont and Sanford, and a verbal warning on social distancing was given to the uh, owner of the uh, establishment. On the orange side, we did 15 verbal warnings over to PA on the borderline to vehicles, and we did 56 verbal and educational warnings given to pedestrian traffic that was on the street at that given time. Uh, we are still monitoring our commercial areas where we had to drive up uh, uh, food dispensaries, uh, we do not shut them down. They are operating under the executive order of the governor. We are though maintaining and watching that everything is being done correctly at those locations. Uh, we also are monitoring right now uh, with this time frame our bodegas, uh, pharmacies, gas stations, and other uh, stores, fast food uh, store locations, just in case of crime starting to rise now. Uh, we've made them uh, a lookout through historical data, and we're monitoring that as we uh, go forward. All our parks are being maintained by patrols on an hourly basis. We have them closed with signage posted, and uh, the police department is uh, directing and enforcing whatever executive uh, measures are necessary. That's my report. Thank you. Thank uh, you, now, Director. Now we're going Thank to move you, to the city of, uh, the great city of North with the uh, Honorable Mayor Raz Barak. Hello, Mayors. Uh, thank all of y'all for, for being a part of what we're doing. I think it's a great effort together. Uh, Newark, we're still at it. We have uh, been at it for a long time here. We are still uh, you know, closing the, the businesses down that are not essential, the ones that are still open. We, we check to make sure that there's social distancing inside and outside. We've shut down uh, stores that we had to and dealt with uh, pedestrians that we thought needed to be dealt with in terms of uh, educational and blue summons as we're doing a lot uh, in the city of Newark. But I think what's really important is that now we are requiring people to wear masks in stores, in locations. Uh, we are concerned about the workers in these stores wearing masks uh, and gloves as well. And so we've been doing that and we've been making sure that they're wiping it down and they're cleaning uh, from senior citizen buildings to supermarkets to places of work like HelloFresh or uh, Easy Pass, making sure that they in fact are practicing the social distancing and they're protecting the workers there. So I want to allow the uh, Public Safety Director Anthony Ambrose to fill you in on all the work that we've been doing in Newark. Good afternoon, mayors and directors. Uh, as we enter our fourth week of this deadly disease, uh, we've uh, implemented our Emergency Operations Center uh, now we're in our fourth week uh, working with our police, fire, and OEM uh, manning the center. Uh, one thing that we started early on was change the tours of uh, the police officers so we could have 50% of our police officers off by 50 are working, and that's working uh, pretty good. We have 48 officers that are out, but it's, it's no disruption to public safety right now. Uh, also, we began early on at the mayor's request of mapping, like we do crime, mapping where the, uh, the uh, positives were coming back early on. So we were mapping them and early on, we noticed an area in the north section of the city where it was, where it was coming in uh, very heavily, uh, the positives. So we were able to uh, close streets down, uh, divert people, educate the people. Uh, also some were, some were uh, apartment buildings and, and high rise. So we started that and we still do it today. All locations are being monitored through camera throughout the, to our cameras throughout the city and our emergency operations center where we could dispatch police if we see crowds. Also the mapping every day, we map every positive case in the city by ward. Uh, and the mayor gives a, a, a uh, 
the results on that. We also uh, educated, we had to educate our police officers and our firefighters. So we educated all of them. We started two COVID-19 task forces. One was for internal purposes, where, uh, the, where police and fire uh, go and they um, go to different firehouses and police precincts and take temperatures and bring supplies, PPEs. That's working now phenomenal. We also have a COVID-19 street where our strategy was to educate the public and the people that are coming into our city uh, who is violating the uh, governor and the mayor's executive order. Uh, we, we did that for two weeks. Uh, the third week, uh, we did notice, again, we're not gonna get 100% compliant of 288,000 residents, 282,000 residents off the street, but we did notice that uh, we did have less when we were alerting them, uh, an hour a day at the mayor's a request we ride the streets fire trucks and police with sirens on almost like the mayor indicated the old air, air raid from years ago uh we noticed our results we monitor is less people on the streets uh then we started to give summonses uh obstructed administration of law based on the governor's uh executive order and we gave out 850 summonses as of yesterday 48 businesses were closed what we're finding here is less summonses each day so that means people are complying uh, with the businesses, we're noticing they're closing their gates, in, giving an indication that they are closed, but they are serving through the rear doors or they're opening. We found nail salons, uh, barber shops, uh, mm. seems to be under control at this point. We had no closures today yet, and yesterday only one. Uh, so I have to say that we're working in conjunction with our, our with co mingleization of our other, uh, uh, other departments, such as health, neighborhood services, which is going out uh, in our ABC, uh, going out to establishments, checking uh, on these locations. One thing that really took is something that the mayor did. He regulated the hours of liquor stores. I don't know if you have that issues in your, in your towns, but the, we regulated the hours from 11 a.m. to 5 p.m. was a huge, huge help. Uh, our border partnership, we stopped over 1,200 motorists. 1,200 motorists were educated and informed about non-essential travel between 8 p.m and 5 a.m., 300 of them uh, alluded to that they didn't know about it. So I look at 300 people, if they didn't and they were telling and they were candid, we could save some lives by doing that. That's all we're looking to do. Uh, our firefighters cooked and are still cooking uh, for seniors and are delivering it in conjunction with the city administration. Um, again, the mapping is very important on the positives and, and also uh, we are seeing less and less people on the street, but. I would say there's about 87 to 90% of the people that are listening and the rest of them are not uh, so far. Uh, and we're still out there at our task force. We'll be out there until this ends. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Director. Um, also, mm -hmm. you know, in the Township of Irvington, I've issued an executive order uh, that complies with the governor's order to make sure that uh, we are doing our part. Uh, our major concern has been social distancing and people staying away from uh, one another and to give a report, I want to introduce uh, my director, Director Tracy Bowers. Hey, good afternoon, Mayor and, and Directors. Um, at the request of our mayor, we created a public safety task force, which is comprised of firefighters and police officers. So what they are, what they are doing is going out in the community, every ward, and they are uh, disseminating information with regard to COVID-19, COVID how to keep them and their family safe, like washing their hands, social distancing, wearing the mask when they're outside. And to be honest, it really has been, been working. We have been getting a lot, of, a lot of compliance, but I have to say some people are not listening. And we did have to issue uh, some summons on a few, few occasions, but um, overall we have been doing a, doing a good job. Um, in addition to the mayor's public safety task force, we also have our safe unit that's out there basically doing the, doing the same thing. And what's unique about them is that they don't answer service calls. All they do is ride around to the hot spots where we have been receiving complaints. So again, um, you know, the cops are on the scene and they have been doing a, a tremendous job out there. Um, we have went to a four and eight schedule where the police officers work four days and they are off eight days, eight days in a row. And this is to limit their exposure to, to the virus. And we, were, we have been able to do that because we pulled back everybody from our various partnerships like the DEA, FBI, ATF, 
we brought them all back. And those cops are now out on the street helping out the, you know, the community. So, you know, so far it's been pretty, pretty good. We're taking a playbook out of each uh, jurisdiction that's here on this phone. And we have a tremendous partnership working together. So um, I think we're doing a, a tremendous job. All right, thank you, Director. So for all of the reports that we got and all of the mayors are on the call, we just need now to get an assessment of one, uh, are we gonna continue the, the lockdown? And if so, how long would we recommend the lockdown continue? Uh, start off with Mayor Vaughn. Yes, in terms of our continuing efforts, I don't, I like what I hear uh, on each side, um, especially here in Orange, we've gotten a company to come in and start to clean our vehicles and start to clean our facilities. We'll do it on a regular basis to protect our employees and our first responders. The efforts that we're making, it seems like we're making progress. Uh, I would just move that we continue what we're doing on a status quo basis, at least until we start to entertain and address some of the inquiries that we received from other municipalities who have similar concerns and may want to speak to us about some of our initiatives. Um, so before we do anything further, um, I think we should speak to them in the meantime, continue our status quo of our lockdown as these numbers start to go down, as we get compliance, I think then we can make a decision at that point. All right, thank you, Mayor. Uh, now we have Mayor Ted Green from East Orange. Thank you, Mayor. Um, you know, looking at our assessment in terms of East Orange, I, I do believe that the operation shutdown should stay in place. Um, what we have to continue to do, and I thank all the directors who have been doing an outstanding job, you know, the weather is breaking right now, right? So it's getting warmer. So we're gonna really have to uh, put a more, uh, 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 you know, we just gotta, we gotta keep the pressure on people because when it's getting warm, we noticed yesterday people start hanging out, people start uh, coming and galvanizing in front of the houses and the stores. So what we're doing, although we are seeing some results, I think that we can't allow people to feel that we can rest on our laurels because folks are complying. But again, as the mayor Owen said, a lot of folks are not complying. And we have to continue to make sure that we as um, communities such as ours uh, can't let people continue to think that they can walk in uh, groups together, that they don't have to comply uh, at a certain time. So I do believe that uh, we should do another seven days uh, and assess it and then have other people join in what we're doing because what we're doing is working, but we have to stay vigilant. We cannot stop doing what we're doing. We have to keep um, our aggressiveness on and we have to make sure people understand that it's not over because the weather is changing. Thank you, Mayor. Now we'll hear from Mayor Baraka of North. I just want to concur with, with uh, both of the mayors. I think it's the right uh, idea to continue to push this as long as we possibly can. The numbers, we have to flatten the curve. We haven't done that yet. And so we have to continue going forward until we see some results in the long run about these lives that are, that are, being, that are being lost and people that are contracting this virus. So I think we should stay at it. And collectively, uh, as, as Mayor Warren pointed out, there's other border cities that are interested in joining in. I think we should entertain that and begin to work with them as well. All right, great. Um, I too uh, agree. And, and I do wanna thank all the mayors and directors for participating in this. It's not an easy task that we have to do uh, each and every day, um, going back and forth with some people complying and some people not complying. And I think it's very important to continue. Uh, we, we see where we wanna be and it's good that we're being proactive to get us there. Um, I too agree, there's other bordering uh, municipalities uh, that border us. Um, and I think that maybe we should reach out to some of them. Um, I've compiled a list here and I just wanna go through so that we all aren't, some, some of us have the same uh, uh, neighbors and I wanna make sure that we're all getting the message out. And we're all uh, assessing the same situation going forward. So I wanna ask that uh, Mayor Raz Barak of Newark, if you can reach out to some of your uh, neighboring communities such as Bayonne, Belleville, East North, Elizabeth, Harrison, Jersey City, 
and Carney. Because uh, I think us trying to, to make sure that we do this in our communities, it has to become a group effort with all of our bordering communities. And I think this will be a good push going forward to contact those municipalities. On my side, I will contact uh, Hillside, Maplewood, and Union. I will reach out to the mayors of those municipalities and see if we can get them to come on board with us as we move forward in trying to, you know, eradicate this, this, this disease as best way we can. Also, I'm gonna ask that uh, Orange uh, Mayor reach out to Montclair, South Orange, and West Orange. You can contact those mayors and those municipalities and we see if we can get those, those mayors involved as well. Also, Mayor Green of East Orange, if you can contact Bloomfield and Glen Ridge, I think that covers all the municipalities that border all of our communities. And I think, you know, sometimes people don't understand the task that we have in front of us, the responsibility and the weight we have of all these communities on our shoulders and making sure that we do the right thing for the people in our communities. Um, it's a tireless, thinkless job, and we continue to do it. And I just want to thank you guys for participating in, in what we see as being proactive and making sure we deal with the problem. Are there any uh, closing remarks from anyone? I think we have to just keep reminding folks to stay home, keep reminding folks to not, you know, group up. Social distance is a key. Um, uh, reminding people, although the weather is breaking, that we still have to stay vigilant, that we're not in a safe zone, um, and we have to continue to do what we have to do to stay safe and healthy. Uh, people cannot think that because they're hearing uh, from any side that things are dropping. No, we are still in trouble with this coronavirus until uh, uh, the state, uh, Washington, the county and the local municipalities say this thing is over. People have to stay focused, period. Stay home. I agree. Very true. All right, gentlemen, thank, thank you. you. And enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you. Thank you.